Hello, welcome to the Black Ponder. I'm Neil Trotter. Today we're talking about Rene Descartes, and we're talking about his discourse on method. Now, Rene Descartes, he's a huge philosopher. Like he, he's a really big deal in Western philosophy. He's one of those people that changed the whole trajectory of where Western philosophy is going. A lot of his ideas are the foundation of what a lot of critical thinkers after him uh, based their work off of. Whether they agreed with him or disagreed with him, Descartes' work is definitely hugely influential in, in, to philosophy. And not just philosophy, he pretty much changed the world. Like, he's one of those type of guys. Um, I mean, just he, he is a famous mathematician and his, his the, the mathematics that he developed are, you know, they're still taught widely in just elementary school, like, you know, like the graphing coordinate system. Like, he developed that system. You know, you learn that in elementary school. A lot of, like, the rules that have to do with positives and negatives, um, you know, the basic notation you use in early geometry, all that stuff you learn in middle school and elementary school, a lot of that stuff directly comes from what Descartes uh, developed. So foundational mathematics, a lot of that is Descartes. A lot of things are accomplished through mathematics, so he's one of those people that changed the world. But we're not going to talk, we're going to talk about a lot of his mathematical things in another video because he kind of focuses more on that and on another piece of his work. We're talking about discourse on method. And I want to talk about one of his most influential statements that he made. Um, I think, therefore I am. And that's like a huge idea in philosophy. It's one of those quotes that tries to prove that we exist. You know, this whole notion that uh, how do we know we exist? Like, do we really exist? How do you know that? And that quote, I think, therefore I am, it was this way of trying to say, hey, we do exist because, you know, there's, we, we we're thinking, so we must exist. Now we're going to dive more in depth with that. Uh, as we continue on to this video, but first let's just dive into some quotes, you know, on this 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 good book, this discourse on method. Let's get into the head of Descartes and try and find some meaning, derive some purpose from what he's saying. You know, that's what I like to do. You know, that's what the Black Ponder is all about. We're gonna go all over the place here. Uh, you know, we're gonna jump in between quotes from various pages. Um, he actually divide Descartes divided his discourse on method into six parts um, but it's meant to be read in just one sitting and it's also meant to be a preface to some of his other works so it's supposed to be short but it's not that short it's like 50 about 50 pages in this book but this book uses really small text so I would say it's around like maybe regularly like generally speaking is around like a hundred pages that's a long amount for a preface so he had the suggested divisions into six parts and is more explicitly uh, notated in this um, edition. So we're going to be jumping around parts and I'll let you know which part is which. <laughs> now right out the bat, uh, part one, uh, he just says something that's very powerful. It just jumped at me out and let me share it with you. The ability to judge well and to dis distinguish what is true from what is false which strictly speaking is what is meant to be common sense or reason is naturally equal in all human beings. Thus the diversity of our views do not result from the fact that some people are more reasonable than others, but simply from the fact that we guide our thoughts along different paths and do not think about the same things. My, my mama, she has to say, she says common sense is not so common. <laughs> That's what she says. It's a mistake to think that common sense is common. Common sense needs to be developed. Let me share with you an example that illustrates what I'm trying to get at. I'm actually from the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, and that's a, a, de a predominantly democratic area. <laughs> uh, I guess people are more into there are more Democrats than there are Republicans. And so uh, back in the day when I remember when George Bush <laughs> got reelected the second time, it was this huge notion that a lot of people were saying that, man, how did this man get voted 
in twice you know i mean that just shows you how stupid most people a lot of people are people are just so stu i mean they, people were saying this you know they were literally saying this <laughs> and that just that just shows you how stupid because a lot of people where i'm from they didn't think george bush did a good job and you know i mean i'm not trying to say i'm, I'm not saying that people who voted for george bush are stupid but a lot of people say that and i think what they're missing this point um is that you know people most people aren't stupid <laughs> you know, uh, we make these statements like pe things happen and like people say oh the, you know you're stupid for doing this uh, these amount of people people are dumb because they do that and why are people so stupid no it's because people thought processes are different and they come to a different conclusion based off of their own thought processes and that's what we need to acknowledge to say that just a certain number of people are stupid or that people do stupid things that's dismissive and that causes problems it causes ignorance and it simplifies things you know we got realize that people have different thought processes and they come to conclusions uh, differently because just people are different and just because you don't understand somebody's thought process or what, what could why they came to the conclusion that they did doesn't mean they're necessarily stupid <laughs> Now, I'm not saying stupidity doesn't exist, you know, some people are stupid to be quite frank. But, you know, most in most instances in the majority of cases, that's not that's not the situation. Let's continue. This is from part 3 of the discourse. There are few people who are willing to express everything they believe, but also because many do not know what they they themselves believe. For the act of thinking by which we believe something is different from the act by which we know what we believe. And one often occurs without the other. Oftentimes people say, <laughs> people say things like, I'm this, I'm that, but they don't really know what that is. For example, a lot of people say, I'm a Democrat, <laughs> you know, and, but they don't really know, like they kind of have this vague understanding of what Democrat, oh, I'm a Democrat if I support, um, President Obama that means I'm a Democrat uh, you know there's more to it than that or like a lot of people say I'm I'm a Republican <laughs> you know I mean, that's all the thing and they don't really dive into what it that means to be a Republican some people say oh I'm agnostic <laughs> you know I'm a you know or I'm Christian or I'm, I'm this and I'm that but do you really know <laughs> exactly what that entails and what does that that really mean a lot of people do make these statements I believe in this I believe in that but they don't really know exactly or to an extent that is significant what it really means to believe what you say you you believe <laughs> and it's important to know what you believe that's very important because uh, once you know that then you can start doing things that are meaningful and that's what it's all about or or also you know to put it another way get to the truth do, do things that actually you know are matter and, and that can make positive change in the world because if you just kind of willy-nilly I believe in this but you do things that don't align with what you actually believe in you do things that are false you do, do things that are counterproductive uh, you don't achieve much because you're saying one thing you're doing the other thing you're just doing things that oppose the other thing you're not really making progress let's further reiterate this this point that Descartes is saying and I just, I'm gonna jump into part six uh, but this quote right here kind of reiterates that point even further even the best minds do not wish to know these principles and Descartes referring to the principles of philosophy and specifically the ones that he's proposing for if they wish to talk about everything and to gain a reputation for being learned they will achieve that more easily by being content with what is probable which can be found without great difficulty in all kinds of subjects then in searching for the truth which can only be found bit by bit in the in some cases in which when it comes to speaking about others forces us to admit frankly that we are ignorant you gotta watch out because there's a lot of people out there and a lot of people with good intentions act ultimately good intentions but they make these statements like they propose these ideas these very important ideas that can have a huge amount of influence but it, it's vague you know they're proposing these ideas and they don't have a lot of meaning a lot of backing behind them a lot of truth for example let's talk about the issue of climate change now there's people who are you know on a fence people saying that global warming is something that 
is a natural process of the earth and some people are saying that global warming is no it's it's an influence of humans affecting the environment and then you know all this discussion about the impact but there's you know and then there's a lot of people out there that are just making a lot of facts and throwing out a lot of information but they don't really have any solid backing a lot of it is just opinion based and not really factual based and it's it's a lot it's very easy to just go off on your opinion and just start being becoming passionate about it you, you see that in, in a lot of news <laughs> You know, people passionately talk about very important issues that are more opinion based and factual. They come across as strong because you might agree with it immediately. But be wary of that. Be wary of that. Is this based off of fact? Is this based off of true information? Or is this more emotion, opinion based? You know, just think about these things. Especially think about these things when it, in regards to very important issues like climate change or other things like that always be mindful of that let's continue with the quote the habit they will acquire by searching initially for easy things and moving gradually to more difficult ones will be more useful to them than all my instructions just as for my own part i am convinced that if i had been taught from my youth all the truths whose demonstrations i have been searching for since then and if i had learned them without effort i might never have known any others at least I would have never have acquired the habit and facility that I think I have for always finding new truths as I apply myself to, for, to search for them. So Descartes is saying like, do your own search, like do your own research. And that's important. Let, I mean, let's just continue with the global warming or um, climate change example, right? Uh, you got all these people telling you this, that, and other thing, all these experts, maybe a lot of them, maybe they are experts, a lot of them are not really experts. But do your own research. Go to the library. Determine which sources are legitimate and which sources are not so legitimate. You know, really do your own research, especially on important issues like that. And, and that way well, you could come to your own conclusion. In today's world, everybody's telling you this and everybody's telling you that and you log on the internet and the first thing you see is this, that, the other thing. And it's important to like take a step back and be like, okay, I've received all this information let me process it and use my own mind and like let me think search to see if this is actually the truth or is it not the truth and use your own effort and your own ability to search and do research on your own and in that way you can be get better get closer to the truth and that's what the discourse on method is all about is about doing that uh, finding that method to search for truth so Descartes is also talking about here is that you have to start from the simple things and once you start from the simple things you can work up to more difficult things so Descartes just goes he starts way down to the most simplest or most a uh, fundamental thing is do I even exist <laughs> you know like, let's you know we talk about all these important issues but it, does it really matter if we don't exist like how do I know I exist and from that we go to the, the famous quote I think therefore I am <laughs> now, let me tell you the story goes and this was actually my philosophy teacher in college. Uh, one of them told me this story about Descartes and that quote. I don't know if this is actually how it went down, but this is what she said. She basically said that uh, Descartes was try struggling with this issue of existence. Um, how do I know I exist? How do I know I exist? So he, what he did is he just walked into a room. It was a, it was a big room. I don't know if it was like a wine cellar or something like that. It was just this large room. He just closed the door, he turned off all lights, so it was just complete darkness. Like it was complete, he couldn't see anything, it was silent, he couldn't hear anything. Uh, there was no sound, there was no light. His sensory ability was limited, right? He just saw complete darkness, he didn't hear anything, that was that. So in that space of just complete darkness, no hearing, uh, just nobody around him, he's like, okay. You know, do I exist? You know, I don't see my body. I, there's not, I don't see anything around me. Am I existing? What's going on here? But then he realized, wait, I, I'm thinking. Like, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there's thought here. You know, that I, I am, there's, the wheels are still churning in my head. Even though I don't see anything, I don't hear anything. Um, there's nobody around me. My sensory ability is very limited, but I'm still thinking. 
And because of that, because I'm thinking, even though there's nothing else, I, I exist because I'm thinking, right? <laughs> and as he came to that conclusion from that, and so he came, in his mind, he's like, okay, I know I exist because I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, I could have, there could be nothing else, but I'm still in the end, without anything else, I'm still thinking. So I must exist if everything else is gone, but I'm still thinking I must exist. And a lot of people went for that notion, like, yeah, you know, Descartes, you know, he has a point there. You know, some people was like, mm, I don't know about that. You still didn't prove you exist. <laughs> um, famously, Kierkegaard was like, mm, <laughs> I don't know about that. You still, you, you still, I, I'm not convinced you proved you exist. Um, but he did say it's more Kierkegaard. If we talk about what he thought, it was more of a psychological standpoint. And I'm gonna go toward that direction. I don't know if he proved the existence. You know, I think we we exist. <laughs> but uh, does that statement prove existence? You know, one could argue. Uh, but what it does prove is that in the end, if we don't have anything else, we have our own mind and we have our own thought process. And that is actually, that can be independent from everything else. It can be. Oftentimes it's not, we get influenced a lot by things, but it can be the case that in the end, if we don't have anything else, we still have our way of thinking, our thoughts, we still have that. Let's look at someone, this quote that goes into that. I knew from this that I was a substance, the whole essence or nature of which was to think in which in order to exist has no need of any place and does not depend on anything material thus this self that is the soul by which i am what i am is completely distinct from the body and is even easier to know than it and even if the body did not exist the soul would still be everything that is so descartes is putting the the thought process he's saying that that originates from the soul now you could take it that approach or the way i take it it is you know if whether you want to think about it as it originates from the mind or the soul wherever you want to take it you have a thought process and it is independent from other sensory devices but you might be thinking in your mind you might, or you know you might want to tell me hey man you know that's i mean that's kind of impossible because we're influenced by everything around us you know everything the way we're raised nature nurture you know we're bombarded with messages all the time you know that's going to make an impact on the way we think you know we're not completely independent from that and that's true you know that's true but we can rise above that it is possible we can recognize that it exists acknowledge that like, okay there's all these things around us that are influencing the way we think are trying to influence the way we think we can acknowledge it and we can rise above that. Listen to this quote that Descartes goes, where we're at, we're at part three. <laughs> for since God has given each of us a light for distinguishing what is true from what is false, I could not have believed that I should be content with the views of other people for a single moment. If I had not planned to use my own judgment to examine them in due course, and I could not have avoided having scruples about their opinions if I had not hoped thereby not to miss any opportunity to find better ones if such were available. So Descartes, he's a Christian. He's taking the religious standpoint on it. And, you know, and if you want to do that, you can say that, yeah, God gave you a mind and he wants to use it. You know, he gave you judgment. Use your judgment. Yeah, but, you know, if you don't want to take it that approach, you can just say you have a mind and you have the ability to judge and to think critically about things. You have that ability to do that. And so use it, use that ability to, you know, you're, we are bombarded with constant messages, but don't use that as an excuse. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it, morally, ethically, I mean, that's, you know, is that really good for us? No, probably not, but it is what it is, you know, and I'm all about accepting reality for what reality is. So we know that that is the case. Now we got, what are we going to do to not allow that to affect us negatively? We're going to use what we have, our ability to critically think and rise above that. Now let's continue with more quotes. By seeing many things, which even though they seem very extravagant and ridiculous to us, were still widely accepted and approved by other great peoples. 
I learned not to believe anything too firmly about which I had been convinced by example and custom alone. Thus, I was gradually freed from many errors and that can cloud our natural light and make us less capable of hearing reason. But once I had spent some years studying in this way, in the great book of the world, and trying to acquire some experience, and decided one day to study also within myself, and to use all the powers of my mind to choose the paths that I should follow. And Descartes say, hey, hey, just keep an open mind, and absorb, or just take into consideration everything around you. Um, don't, you know, I use the word absorb, don't absorb everything, um, take it in you you have a filter you, which is judgment your thought process your critical thinking ability take it in filter it see if it works for you based off that determine what's true and what's false but keep an open mind don't be dismissive either some of my friends who are christian right they think that you know christian people should just hang out or associate you know be friends only with christians right and it's detrimental to your faith if you start hanging out or becoming real friends with people who are not Christian. And I disagree with that. I think that it, uh, when you do that, you, you're not like putting your faith to the test and you're not challenging yourself and you're not, um, you know, you build your faith stronger if you com confront different belief systems and different points of view and different thoughts. You know, let me give you another example. I have a friend who is not a Christian at all and they were raised Christian and they determined like, yeah, that's not for me. Yeah, the moment she found that out was she went to like as a child she went to like summer Bible camp or whatever and they asked her the question uh, what does God mean to you and she could that's her she that's what she told me she, she was like you know I just I don't know you know I don't know what God is to me uh, and so that because of that she just said okay I'm just I'm not gonna be a Christian anymore I'm just because I don't know what God is to me and that's a shame you know that church didn't really do a good job teaching her what God really means to her. But every Christian should have a, an answer to that question. Uh, what God, what does God mean to me? Uh, and it should not be just some scripted, generic, like uh, thing that you just learned in Sunday school or church, like just reciting a Bible quote and it has no meaning. No, you should really know and believe and think critically about, yeah, what does God really mean to, to me? And I, over the years, I've developed what I think, what God means to me, uh, from you know associating and talking and even being be, being friends with other faiths and with people who believe in other faiths and other religion and people who don't believe in religion at all, people who think religion is immoral. <laughs> even you know I, I even uh, talk to people like that, and, um, you know, and based off of all those things, uh, I still you know I'm still Christian. I still strongly believe in that, and I have a strong idea of what God needs to be uh, but it has been developed over time not only through a strong foundation in the church but also by going out and experiencing other people's points of views and other belief systems and that challenged my faith and it built it and it, it made my faith even stronger because I'm like okay this works for this person why is that the case why would that work for me why would that not work for me uh, based off of what this person believes in this belief system, how does God fit into that, blah, 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 blah. You're building a foundation. You're building your faith stronger. Uh, but uh, you do have to have a, a good, strong background. Uh, that's why I get, I would say being raised in the church, if you're a Christian, is like critical because you need to have that, that foundation. Um, but, you know, don't, you know, the worst thing you could do is put yourself in a bubble or some sort of uh, box, you know, some sort of, because that built, that's a fault, you create a false sense of what reality really is, and you, and you need to be challenged, you need, that, that has to happen for you to become stronger and for your sense of truth to be uh, more powerful. Now, I'm not going to, like, uh, sum, summarize the discourse on method for you or give you, like, a Sparks note. We don't do, we don't do Spark notes. <laughs> the black ponder that's not what we do i read the text i talk about quotes that spark interest in me i see what meaning we can derive from that uh, and then we try and put that in the overall context of the the theme of the text that's what we're doing with discourse on method i would encourage you to read it it's only a preface though so it's not gonna 
detail exactly how best you should uh, uh, approach method you know the search for truth is not going to dive deep in that it's just going to give you like an overview like what are the best ways to approach truth it's trying to build a case on why you should have a strong method to search for truth that's what the discourse on method is about it also talks about limitations on what we actually can understand and that's an important thing to realize too but it's a good int intro if you just read that alone you're going to get a good intro and a good I idea to what Descartes is talking about in his philosophy it's all about the search for truth that's what philosophy is all about my opinion in the black ponder i like to focus on how the human experience as it relates to the search of truth i don't try and get too abstract with it to um I don't try and throw out too much jargon, you know, because a lot of philosophy, that philosophers, they kind of go over your head just throwing terms at you and stuff. We try and break it down and bring it to a human level. And Descartes' Discourse on Method does that. So it's about developing a search for truth and why that search for truth is important. We're definitely going to continue talking about Descartes, that's for sure, on later videos. Uh, he is definitely an influential and extremely important person in philosophy. And he did, like I said before, he changed the world. He really did. And we're definitely going to talk, be talking more about Descartes. But until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.